sorry to bother you so early, but there's been an accident. Can I use your telephone? Miss, I, I just hit someone with my car. I'd like to be able to use your phone to call the police. Well, if you don't mind, you could call them for me. Thank you. Five, 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 three, seven, eight, oh. Thank you. Hello. I'm calling to report an accident. Someone's been killed. Highway 67, north of town. No, I, I don't know how far. Uh, last sign I saw said Gainesville, 12 miles, but that was a, it was quite a long time ago. A little under two miles to town. It's about two miles out. Ryder. David Ryder. Oh yes, he's dead. Yes, I'm sure. But you... Yes, I told you, I'm sure. Right. Right. Oh, oh yes, I'll be there. and the use of the phone. Uh, thank you. Officer? Can I see your driver's license, please? Man, I... Can I see your driver's license, please? You want to take it off for me? Hey, Doc, he says the body's down in there someplace. In there? Yeah. You been drinking, Mr. Ryder? Oh, no. The woman up there gave me a drink while I was talking to you on the phone. Miss Hanson, huh? Is that her name? Why don't you go show him? All right. Where is it? Right down there, by that tree. I left him right there. He was right there. The straws pressed down. He was right here. Right here. I took a good look at him. He was dead. There was no breath. No pulse. No heartbeat. He was dead. You a doctor, Mr. Ruddick? No, but you don't have to be a doctor to know a dead man when you see one. No, but I mean, are you sure you saw one? What I mean is, see, you've been driving all night. You're tired. Even your eyes get tired. 
Road's deserted. Sir, once more you take a little drink, I mean, just to keep awake. And suddenly your car goes out of control, and I told you. There was a man in the road, and I hit him. Then when I went back up there to help him, he was dead. Well, I just don't see any evidence to support your story. All right. I'll show you a piece of evidence. You got me out of a nice warm bed for nothing. Take a look at this. Now this here, this is where I hit him. You hit him over here too? You see the side of that thing? Oh, no, that yeah. happened when I was down in the ditch there. But I tell you, I hit him right here. Well, you hit something, all right. Maybe you hit a deer. No, no, I saw him. I touched him. It was a man. Or a cow. Since when did cows start wearing buttons? Hey, Chuck. This thing run? Yeah. Why don't you follow me back to town? We'll make a report to the office. insist he was dead. Yes, yes, I do. Well, I tell you, most dead bodies don't just get up and walk away. No. And they sure aren't the kind of thing people go around stealing. That's true. Well, so what do you suggest? I don't know. I'll be through this in a minute. Oh, uh, could I trouble you for a copy of that report when you get finished? For the insurance company. I'll give you a copy the first thing in the morning. See, I was, uh, I was planning on driving through to San Francisco today. It's very important that I be there. It's about a job. This is Mr. Ryder. Now, you've been driving all night. You just had an accident and almost got yourself killed. I don't care what you say, you look pretty jumpy to me. Besides that, you've been drinking. I thought I explained about the drink. Yeah, well, I think it's a good idea if you just sack out today and pull yourself together. We'll get all this cleared up later on when you're not so tired. You're trying to tell me that I'm under arrest? I'm just telling you you ought to stay here. We could just clear it up. OK. Hey, you want to sign your name right down there, please? Name right across that flat there. What for? So you'll recognize it the next time you see it. You don't have to worry about that. I'll recognize it all right. There you go. That'll take care of it. That's your driver's license. Well, you ought to get that renewed pretty soon. Why don't you go get some rest, Mr. Riley? It's about a half a mile up the road. There's the best motel in town. Fine. Thank you very much. Matter of fact, it's the only motel in town.
you know, Danny, I'm sorry to bother you, but is there some place around where I can get something to eat? Oh, you slept too long. The bar's still open, though they serve sandwiches. And you passed it this morning on your way here. You back toward town? That's right. How'd you know I came from that direction? Just a guess. Sandwiches. I uh, I just do it as a service. They haul all the way in from uh, Washington. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, be just fine. Did I startle you? Just a bit. Sorry, I saw you sitting there and I thought. About the accident. I know just about everyone who lives around here, and uh, I was wondering if maybe I knew who it was. Well, I'm afraid I can't help you. I hate to bother the police just to satisfy my curiosity. Well, they couldn't tell you any more than I could. See, when I went back, the body wasn't there. And he wasn't dead. I took a good long look at him. He was dead. Did you tell me what he looked like? His 40s, grayish hair, mustache. His, his watch, he had, a, he had a small gold watch. It looked kind of expensive. I only noticed that. Is there something wrong? Do you know him? I have a brandy, please. Uh, could I have a brandy, please? On top of that beer? Well, it's not for me. See anybody now? Come on, give me the buck ten you owe me.
Get me the police. Nothing missing, huh? I don't understand it. Why would anybody go to all that trouble and not take anything? You tell me, Mr. Ryder. I don't know. Well, there's no sign of a forced entry. Nothing taken. Yeah, it's almost like it never even happened. Wouldn't you say that? No, I wouldn't say that at all. You've had a pretty busy day, Mr. Ryder. First of all, you kill a man with your car, only it turns out that he's not there. Then you burglarize, and it turns out that nothing's taken. You begin to sound like some kind of a nut. Again, Mr. Ryder? Yep. Yeah. What do you think's the matter, Grady? Uh, I don't know. I'd say you got one of two things here. Either it's not getting enough gas, or it's not getting enough spark. I can smell the gas. Hey, what, you got troubles? Yeah, my car won't start. Little ignition problem, Ross. Worked all right last night. Yeah, right there's your problem, right there. You got a broken distributor cap. Can you see that crack? We got one of those in stock? No, I don't know. Well, if we have it, we'll send for one. It'll be here this afternoon. I've got to get to San Francisco. Don't worry, Mr. Ryder, you'll get there. Well, we got to fix up that front end, too. Align it. Hey, Mr. Ryder, Chuck's a good man. He'll get you out of here in no time. Look, got a copy of that report for you. Oh, yeah. But she... Remember that woman who let me use her phone? Miss Hanson, yeah. I talked to her in the bar last night. Miss Hanson wouldn't be caught dead in the bar. She's a fine, upstanding Baptist lady. Well, I talked to her last night. I described the man that I hit. I think she knew who it was. Is that right? Well, maybe I'd better have a talk with her. I'll go with you. That won't be necessary, Mr. Ryder. No, 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 no. That's the questions I'd like to ask her myself. Hunting season over? There's Norman Gaines out there. From where you're sitting, everything you see, he owns. And I mean the land, the factory, and the town, and most of the people in it. Including you? Well, let me put it this way. I'm not going to be the one to tell him hunting season's over. Mr. Cabot. Miss Hanson. Mr. Gaines isn't here at the moment. No, we saw him down the field. Can we come in? I want to talk to you. And how do you feel today? Fine. Fine, thank you. Miss Hanson, Mr. Ryder here said that he talked to you last night in Joe Red's place. 
Me? In that place? You know better than that, Mr. Gabby. Oh, no, wait. That's not the woman I talked to. This is Miss Hanson. Well, I don't care who she is. The woman I talked to was white. She was, uh, she was young, blonde hair, blue-eyed, slender. Was somebody else here yesterday morning? No, sir. Just me and Mr. Gaines, and he slept late. When Mr. Ryder here came up to use the phone, did you open the door? Yes, sir. That's a lie. You watch your mouth. Now, I'll be the one who decides who's lying around here. What happened? The bell rang when I opened the door. He said there'd been an accident and could have used the phone. So I showed him the phone, told him the number, and made him a drink. He looked like he could use one. No! That's not what happened? Yes. Yes, that, that, that's what happened, but I tell you, she's lying. I think you better wait in the car, Mr. Ryder. Now look, Chief. There have been a lot of things that have happened to me in this past day. I want... I told you to wait in the car, okay? Must have been very upset. Yesterday they treated an accident victim that fitted the description you gave us. Minor injuries, abrasions, contusions. Checked in, checked out, and long gone. I guess that clears up the mystery. And yeah, I bet my car is just about ready to roll. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. I guess nothing left to do but to mail in this insurance report. Here, I'll take care of that for you. Oh, it's all right. I'll, I'll do it myself. I'll get you an envelope and a stamp. Looking for this? What? Do you want that letter in this pickup? Well, I'll mail it in the next town. Ready to go? Yeah, I think 
this. I'll get it, Brady. Come in, Mr. Gaines. Norman Gaines does pretty well, doesn't he? Well, yeah. Not as well as some people might think, though. Oh? What do you mean by that? Well, see, Norman's daddy died and left him a whole lot of money and stuff like that. Well, Norman's kind of got a hole in his bucket. Everywhere he goes, he just leaks money. Oh, I think that ought to get you. I'll get you, Bill. Let's see now. We got a replaced a rotor, new distributor cap, and uh, oh, listen, I lined the front end on it too. What does that come to? Uh, labor's twenty eight. Oh, here it is. Forty six ninety five be the total. Mm hmm. Twenty. 40, 5, 7. Uh, let's see. That'd be, uh, that'd be one big nickel change. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Come back. Hey, just a minute. Hold it. I'm afraid it's not ready yet, Mr. Ryder. What are you talking about? I, I got shut up. up. Well, it's all right. I'll take it the way it is. I'm afraid I can't let you do that. Well, I'm afraid you can't stop. <laughs> Could you tell me, please, how many hospitals are there in Kirby? Oh, uh, well, uh, get it for me, will you? The reception desk. And uh, would you make up my bill? I'm checking out. Yes, I know. I know. It's, it's after 12 o'clock. Hello? I'm checking on an accident victim that came in yesterday morning. Uh, this is the insurance adjuster. Yes, I believe it was an automobile accident, and it was early in the morning. Man was 40-ish, gray hair, must... None? Not since when? Thank you. Thank you very much. No, no, no that's all right. Get me the county sheriff's office, will you? What do you mean? Well, all the lines can't be busy, can... Never mind, never mind. All right, let's go. Go where? Let's go. Where are you taking me? Come on, let's go. All right. What have I done? Well, you've upset a lot of people, Mr. Ryder. Hit pedestrians who aren't there, report burglaries that never happened, call people liars, run off without paying your bills. What? $46.95. Well, I paid that bill. Do you have a receipt? No, I gave the cash to that mechanic. What's his name? Brady. Brady. Yeah. Well, where's he? He just took off for the weekend. Well, now, that's very convenient, isn't it? Well, just what do you mean by that, Mr. Ryder? Who is this man? This is our mayor, Mr. Dozier. Right now, he's acting as your lawyer. 
I mean, you don't think we question a suspect without having his lawyer present, do you? Well, he's asking all the questions. I'm just trying to keep this out of court, Mr. Ryder. I thought perhaps if we could discuss it, we might come to realize it's all a misunderstanding. Keep this out of court? What for? Now, what am I accused of? We're still working on it. Shut up, Chuck. Now, Mr. Ryder, if you'll just... I want to make a phone call. Well, I'm afraid we can't let you do that, Mr. Ryder. I'm entitled to make one phone call. Isn't that right? Well, technically, you haven't even... I don't mean technically. I mean legally. I'm allowed to make one phone call, and I want to make it right now. And I want to know specifically what the charges are against me. Now. And I... I don't want you for my lawyer. I know a lawyer in San Francisco. I'm going to talk to him right now. All right, Chuck, put that gun away. I'm going to kill him. Now, you're not going to kill anybody. Just put that gun away and let us take care of this. You pull that trigger and I'll testify against you in a murder trial. And there wouldn't be a lawyer in the world who can save you. You'd really do that, wouldn't you? You have my solemn word. No, I wasn't going to really kill him. This up. A lot of things that I want to clear up. Give me the county sheriff's office, please. Since you're not calling your own lawyer, I'll be glad to continue to represent you. My name is David Ryder. I'm calling from the police department in Gainesville. I can understand how you might be upset, Mr. Ryder. Thinking you killed someone and finding out that you had. Well, I still don't know about that for sure. Dead men just don't get up and walk off. That's right. Somebody must have carried him off. Well, I want to know why and by who. I tell you, Sergeant, there's, there's something going on here. Then you think there's some kind of a plot? Uh, Sergeant, I am not a nut, if that's what you're thinking. Okay, Mr. It all boils down to this. There's no evidence whatsoever to support your story. Well, what about that button I found on the grill of my car? Now, it's a very unusual one. I'm sure there's somebody in this town that might recognize it. Ross, let's take a look at it. here you were under the influence of alcohol. That's not right. I was given a drink after the accident. That's true. But I couldn't tell if it was the only one he'd had or not. He was pretty shaky. Well, Mr. Ryder, uh, anything else? Looks to me like you could use a cup of coffee. Sergeant, every word I told you was the truth. The honest-to-God truth. That's more than likely. Well, then why didn't you do something about it? Like what? I don't know. 
Let me give you a piece of advice. Pack your bags and move on. For some reason, you upset these people. One of them's already pulled a gun on you. When that happens, it's time to leave. Yeah, but I would like to know what's been going on here. I can understand that. But that's just idle curiosity, Mr. Ryder. What's going on here may be perfectly normal, or it may not be. But whatever it is, it's probably none of your business. Well, why am I involved? Because you're here. And there's only one way to fix that. Thank you, Sergeant. Thanks again, Sergeant. Night. Night. Your bill's all ready for you. Get me the police, please. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, never mind. Mrs. Hanson, this is David Ryder, the man who had the accident. Uh, could I speak to Mr. Gaines, please? Well, could I ask you to wake him up? It's very important that I talk to He's not retired for the night. He's not asleep. He's dead because I killed him. Better things to do than to check out nuts. Lipscomb's nobody's dummy. He's bucking for a promotion. Bro, if someone comes to you with a story like that, what would you do? I guarantee you one thing. I'll be glad when tomorrow morning gets here. Well, we all. Except maybe Doc Potter. Supports this whole town. Where do you think I live, Woody? Yeah, but you won't starve if it closes. On relief, they don't buy meat. Oh, cool down, Woody. Nothing's going to happen to Mr. Gaines before tomorrow morning. After Transnational Incorporated takes possession. After the 
escrow closes. Yes, Woody. That's not what's bothering me. What's bothering me is that it's against the law. It's not a matter of law, my friend. It's a matter of loyalty. And staying alive. Well, Woody, why don't you shut up? Lawyer, I'm an officer of the court. It's my duty to consider the legal aspect of everything I do. The purpose of the law is to protect the people, isn't it? Isn't that right? Right. That's what we're doing, isn't it? Protecting the people of this town? Huh? Okay, okay. Let's stop worrying about the law and get down to what's really important. What do we do about Norman Gaines? We simply arrange for Mr. Gaines to die a nice, normal, natural death. At the proper time. It shouldn't be too difficult since I'm Norman's personal physician and the county coroner. I'll fly the way. And everybody has to be in on this. That includes you, buddy. All right, Doc. And as soon as it's over, it's over. Nobody ever mentions it again. Ever. You understand? Hey, Chuck, are you? Yeah. Hey, Woody. What? Is that refrigerator door supposed to be open? Oh, for crying out loud. Ah, it's okay. trying to kill me. I want some answers.
this is the man I killed, isn't it? You were at his house when I came to use the phone. Weren't you? I gave you a drink. Well, are you his wife? His girl? His mistress? Whatever he wanted me to be. Why are they trying to cover up his death? I don't know. Now look, lady. I don't. I really don't. Where are you taking me now? To your car. There it is. The things are in the back. And if I were you... You'd get in it and go. I sure will. So fast, it'll make your head swim.
The police are looking for you. They say you killed Julie. That's not true. I didn't kill anybody. Probably. You hungry, Mr. Ryder? I make pretty good waffles, but cold cuts are faster. Why did you lie? Because that woman was Chief Cabot's wife. Do you think that I was going to tell Mr. Cabot that his wife stayed here all night with Norman Gaines, huh? What was Norman Gaines doing down on the highway? He was drunk. They had a fight before dawn. She was waiting for him. When the bell rang, she thought it was him. Who was that down on the fields with the dogs? And, and who was driving the car? Dr. Potter. Why? Why are they doing this to me? I wish I had a dime for every time I've asked that question and got no answer. What kind of a man was he, Miss Hanson? Just a man. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sorry about the lies, Mr. Ryder. But I wasn't really lying to you. That's all. I didn't believe you anyway. Neither did Mr. Cabot. It's about 60 miles to the state line and about two miles back to town. Either way, it's a long walk. And the police all over the state are looking for you. The car that those keys go with is in the garage. What if somebody asks about that car? Nobody's going to ask me anything. I'm leaving this place and these people. I'm going to live with my daughter. Oh, no, thank you. I'm not going to do it. Do what? Run from a murder charge in a stolen car. Well, oh, they've used me just about as much as they're going to use me. Oh, give me the county sheriff in Kirby. Hello. I want to talk to Sergeant Lipscomb. I don't care where he is. I've got to talk to him. Oh. Well, all right. Tell him that, uh, that David Ryder called. David Ryder. Gainesville. And if he hurries, he can get here before somebody gets killed. One. Which one of those is the telephone wire? I don't know.
sorry, Mr. Hanson. And I still say, what if someone catches him first? I'll catch him. That's the last thing I ever do. I'll catch him. Sorry about your wife, Ross. I didn't... Well, none of us thought it would go so far. I don't want to talk about it. He didn't seem the kind of a guy that would kill someone in cold blood. I said I don't want to talk about it, okay? Sorry. It seems to me that if all the other conditions had been met... The escrow closed last night. The factory is now a subsidiary of Transnational Incorporated. Well, and the death of Norman Gaines will have no effect on the future of the factory. Or of a town. All right, I'll tell you what we'll do. Woody, when we leave here, you're going to deliver a side of beef to Norman Gaines' house. In exactly one hour, I'm going to receive a phone call from Mr. Gaines complaining of severe chest pains. Check, you're gonna make that phone call to me so that it's a matter of record. In exactly two hours, poor Norman will die of a coronary occlusion. At that time, I will take his body to the morgue where I personally will prepare it for cremation. Tomorrow morning, the body will be burned and the ashes will be scattered. I'll take care of the necessary paperwork. Well, have I forgotten anything? Yeah, me. You've forgotten me. You gentlemen have been using me. Two days ago, I stumbled into town. I upset your plans. And since then, I've been the fall guy for your corruption. Mr. Ryder, I suggest you don't take it too seriously. When people lie to me, when they make a fool out of me, when they come at me with guns, I take that seriously. When they accuse me of murder, I take that seriously. And when someone tries to kill me, I take that very seriously. Who tried to kill you, Mr. Ryder? Same man who murdered his wife because he found out she was cheating on him. Maybe, maybe he didn't just find out. Maybe he knew it all along. Maybe he was waiting for the right time, waiting for some sucker to come along. Some sucker like me. It was you who had that gun last night. That shot that you fired. When I ran, I thought you missed me, but I was wrong. You didn't want to hit me. You hit what you were aiming at. Your wife.
You've only got two barrels, and they're both empty. Now put the gun on the desk and empty your pockets. This, uh, this changes everything. We can uh, forget about Gaines's heart attack. Woody, one shot, one shot into Mr. Gaines right here from about six feet away. What about the noise? Now, don't worry about the noise. The refrigerator wall is too thick. Nobody will hear anything. And then take the body over to the morgue. I'll, I'll take care of the papers. Cabot's wife last night, then he killed Cabot and Mr. Gaines here today. Of course. Not guilty. By reason of insanity. I'll testify on his behalf. He's completely mad. Stand back, please. Stand Still insists he killed Gaines in an automobile accident two days ago. Doc Patterson is not he's a pet bug. You get in touch with uh, Mr. Gaines' housekeeper, let her know what happened? Phone's out of order. Just doesn't seem like the crazy type. What type is that, Carl? I don't know exactly. Let's go, Stacy. I wouldn't say anything more if I were you, Mr. Ryder. Not until you talk to your lawyer. I've been telling you the truth. I'm sorry, Mr. Ryder. Stop at Norman Gaines' house. Talk to his housekeeper. She knows what's been going on. I'm sorry, Mr. Ryder. Will you stop saying I'm sorry and do what I ask? Your lawyer will take care of finding witnesses for your defense. All I'm supposed to do is deliver you to the county jail in Kirby. There's no time, Sergeant. We've got to find her now, today, before it's too late. Look, Ryder. If you'd only She's understand. going away. She's leaving. She's my last chance, my only chance. Sergeant. For God's sake, Sergeant, she's the only chance I've got.
take a right at the top of the hill. Sure. The phone's out of order. Somebody's got to tell her what happened. Maybe she's out back. Maybe she didn't hear the doorbell. Nobody's here, Mr. Ryder. the car. I'm sorry, Mr. Ryder. It's Miss Hanson. It's her, I tell you. It's her. Miss Hanson? That's right. You work for Norman Gaines? I did. So a couple of days ago. Well, what happened? That's when he was killed. Killed how? Murdered? No, sir. He was run down by a car. That was the man who hit him. You saw it happen? No, he came to the house to use the phone. And you let him in? Mrs. Cabot did. Come to see Mr. Gaines. When? The night before. Did Mrs. Cabot come to see Mr. Gaines often? At night? Yes, sir. She did. Why? Oh, now, that's something you would have to ask Mr. Cabot or Mr. Gaines. They're both dead. I know. Thank you. 